Digital identity is sadly one of the things that was not well tackled early on in the history of internet protocols, and we've kind of been patching our way to uh, ever since. Uh, there were a series of great attempts to try to disassociate kind of authentication with authorization, right? And kind of who you are versus what you're allowed to do or where you're allowed to use that. And that's where we had standards like OAuth for somebody like a Twitter or a Facebook to implement login with Facebook, login with Twitter. But there were only so many of those that could be offered. You weren't going to see websites offering a thousand different login with kinds of services. Increasingly, websites are just assuming that your Facebook login is your login for this website. And uh, I could soon see a day where Facebook with its real names pro policy is trying to become the next generation of uh, identity verification. And I think that's incredibly problematic. I think we need to create an internet and an identity system that is not Facebook. There are two ways to do this kind of identity. We can either do it through a central body who knows everything about us and then will assert that fact to other people when they ask them. Uh, or I can be in control of that. I can be a, um, a, 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 a have a sovereign, self-sovereign identity, right? Where I'm controlling what you know about me. And I think it's obvious to, to everyone if you presented those two those two alternatives, which would be the safer for dissidents, which would probably be the better for protecting our personal data. Um, I understand if people go, yeah, but we've always done identity through governments having papers, you know, but we have a chance to do something better now. We have a chance to use digital technology and simple math to uh, make identity and the proving of identity uh, uh, um, safer and more preserving of human rights. How do we not recreate the problems we see already in the centralized internet, aka how do we not rebuild the surveillance state um, in a more immutable form? Um, so, there are many ways to do this. Um, decentralized identity often uses some type of attestation. So, um, you know, an organization might attest to your identity in some way. You might sort of choose from a configuration of different attestations to identity. One is maybe your state ID. One is your membership in some group. One is um, your social media profile here. Um, and some constellation of those things attests to identity. Um, but, you know, um, once those things are parsed, something pu published um, in a peer-to-peer -peer identity system, something that is hidden a lot of the times is that these networks are open. Um, they're publicly queryable, especially in the case of um, a blockchain network or um, IPFS. So once shared, that data is public to the world. A lot of the time it's uh, pseudonymously shared, but pseudonymity is not anonymity. Um, and so it's important to understand those distinct distinctions um, when you're engaging. People don't typically associate all their digital life with a single identity. They actually use multiple identities that they try to generally keep disassociated. And so I think what we're gonna see in, in our space is actually the emergence of different identity tools to solve different um, problems that users face. And so you'll have your identity tools for engaging in commerce. You might have your identity tools for engaging in um, uh, with medical applications, and you might have uh, identity tools for uh, your public social profiles and different identity tools for your private, for different private social profiles. But being able to keep those separate is going to be a really important challenge itself. And so um, I think a lot of projects are starting to work on that and allowing me to have any number of identities that I need um, to interact with the different networks that I'm interacting with. Um, but I think that usability issue is really going to drive a lot of identity solutions um, uh, coming to the space. The idea of a wallet that brings these digital assets, digital identity documents, and other pieces of ourselves that we have on the D-Web into one place and gives us that sense of safety and trust, 
that's going to be an important role. And I think that's an extension of the role that browsers play. It might be something browsers do, but it could also end up being something that sits complementary to a browser. Uh, reuses a lot of the same user interface paradigm and, 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 and UX that people expect, but is actually a functional complement the same way that, say, your mail client is functionally a complement to your browser. Domain names are, you know, are your, you know, our digital identities, and they were seen this way in the 1990s. They even had consumer use cases. You know, I was building and sharing my my blog uh, website with uh, with friends, and you know, we were doing this even in even in middle school before social media. So uh, they definitely have this they have this role to play. And really, what you need is you need to be able to have a you know an easy to remember name username that people can interact with send money to send messages to whatever uh and uh and you need to have a private key to be able to sign transactions with and so what you do is is you have the domain name in your wallet and then you're signing a message with a private key that controls that domain name uh and you have those you have those two things you have a a, a digital id that's controlled by you the user um which is really you know it's really never never existed before uh and the the possibilities there are, are quite lim limitless so I think decentralized web is definitely a lot. It's definitely more than uh, more than websites. Um, it really is this concept of uh, a user-controlled identity uh, that is going to unlock uh, unlock all kinds of new applications. You'll be able, if you're an EU citizen, to carry your own identity in your secure wallet, encrypted, and that when you go to a hotel, instead of handing them over your passport and credit cards as verification of your identity, you will hold your own identity in your phone and they'll verify it there. What does that mean? It means that the hotel never holds your identity information in their servers. It can't get hacked. There's so many different ramifications of that. It makes it easier. You want to rent that, uh, that bike on the street? Well, instead of typing in your driver's license information and handing over your information to that rental company, you hold it in your own phone. I think it's one of the, the, the ways that people can immediately understand why decentralizing identity, decentralizing storage of where the data is held uh, has real impact for them in, in the very near future. I think identity is going to be a lot more like a set of building blocks that uh, aren't aren't connectable by anybody uh, that you don't permission, but you can compose them into the right identities at the right moment in time. And those building blocks could include things like profile, past history, past data sets, um, derived information, other applications you use. Um, and I think that there's a, a number of really neat projects that are kind of tackling what those structures should look like and how you can do those compositions. But I think that's a really exciting future in this composable data idea. Like I like my life is actually a composition of my, you know, my eating, my lifestyle, my daily habits, my online my online activities, my browsing, my my uh, my consumer spending, all those things, and and those are each broken up into a, a lot of different subsets of data that I may or may not want to share with different applications, um, depending on what that application is, or different people depending on who those people are. But being able to compose those building blocks at the right moment and the right right time could actually give me a lot of value by sharing the right piece of information. I might be able to connect with new people, or I might be able to find new things that I'm interested in, or I may be able to find insights about my own life, and that gets me really excited um, because I I think that we're just in this trajectory where more and more of our lives is digital. So being able to being able to pull out the right pieces and snowball them into the next thing. Um, that that I, that I'm doing, I think is is really exciting.